da. Wait, that's the wrong key. Ba -ba -da -da. Ba -ba -da -da. Hey, Banjo Ben here at banjobenclark.com. This is your home for videos and tabs, for learning the guitar, the five string banjo, and of course the mandolin. Today we are looking at an old fiddle tune that we've adapted for the mandolin. I think you're going to dig it. I know you are. Check this out. East Tennessee Blues. Pretty cool, huh? I love that fiddle tune stuff on the mandolin, especially those uh, those bluesy sounding songs. Those are really cool. Um, what I'd like for you to do now, if you're watching this on my website as a Gold Pick member, um, jump on over to Mandolin Tabs and print out the PDF for East Tennessee Blues, as I'll be referring to it um, as we learn this together. If you're watching this on my um, YouTube channel and you haven't come over to my website to be a Gold Pick member, what are you waiting for? I make it as affordable as I possibly can to be a Gold Pick member and uh, to be able to have access to all my videos and tabs um, that I update each and every week. So come on over there and uh, be one of the cool kids and join as a Gold Pick member. But um, let's get started on this East Tennessee Blues. What do you say? The first thing I'd like to mention is that East Tennessee Blues is traditionally played in the key of C. If you've watched my theory videos, you'd know that our uh, three most common chords when we're in a key is the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. We find that by uh, playing the scale of the key that we're in. So if we're in C, we're going to play the C scale and see what our uh, first, fourth, and fifth tones are. Here's a C, so one, we know we're going to have a C chord in there. One, two, three, four, there's an F note. So we know that a four chord or an F chord is probably going to be pretty common. And then there's our fifth tone, a G. So a G chord is probably going to be pretty common. And that's exactly the case in East Tennessee Blues. Except we have one other chord that does creep its way in. Uh, we have a D major chord. And um, I would call that a two chord because that's the second tone in our C major scale. One is C, two is D, so a D chord. But as we kick this song off, um, if you look there on the tab, in, uh, in measure one, I have what's called sync notes, okay? If you've got the PDF for this, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you're playing with the, uh, with the TEF files, I've had requests from listeners to put in those sync notes so that as you're practicing and playing along with that TEF file, um, which is really cool because it, it'll play the song for you, uh, you have those little sync notes to kind of help you get, get on track before the music starts, so it will it'll give you a little note, uh, a little three count there uh, to get you started off. But really the song doesn't start till measure two, uh, where we see um, the, uh, the text there, I put kickoff, and we start off with three down strokes, three quarter notes. On the third fret of the A string, then an open E string, and then the first fret. And then we have in measure three, the first downbeat of when the song really starts, okay? And this is a cool song because it gets into a lot of patterns. We're going to use a lot of the same patterns as we go from string to string, and uh, that, that makes the song a little easier to learn. And uh, what I'd like for you to do is we're coming from this first fret in measure two, and then we're going to be asked in measure three to play the third fret with our middle finger, and then the fifth fret with our ring for this little pattern. It goes like this. Down, up, down, up, okay? After you've done that once, if you're more comfortable playing with your first finger, then many times I will scoot up. You see how I shifted there? It really doesn't matter what fingers you play it with. You'll have time to switch whenever we play open strings. 
if you're stronger with those particular fingers, by all means do that. Uh, measure four um, is, is pretty straightforward. We're just going to transition down uh, to the string beneath it. Measure four sounds like this. Slowly. Down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. Now as we get to measure five, we switch chords. We're going to an F chord. And we're going to use that same pattern except on the A string. If you've watched uh, my other mandolin videos there on the website, you'll know why we can do this, why we can switch strings and have the same chord, uh, same pattern whenever we're going to the four chords. Pretty cool how the mandolin's set up. But there, measure five, we see the same pattern. Kind of sounds like Twilight Zone, doesn't it? Measure six. Good, good stuff. Now as we get into measure uh, seven, it's a little tougher, just a little bit, but it's not bad. I'm gonna play measure seven for you really slow. Cool. Now, many times I will start that measure off with my ring finger on the fifth fret of the D string. I know that I'm going to have to come up for that pattern for the second half of the measure. However, many people, a lot of people I see, will play that fifth fret with their middle finger. Then just shift up. I um, will tend to use my fingers if they're there. Okay, measure eight, slowly. Pretty straightforward there. Measure nine, we get into that D chord, the two chord. Okay, and so it's a little bit of a stretch, more of a left hand workout for us. Uh, very slowly, I'll play measure nine. Okay, our rhythm's a little different. Up to now, we've had pretty much straight eighth notes, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Here we get into a little syncopation. You need to pay attention because that seventh fret on measure nine is a quarter note. It's not an eighth note, so we have to freeze on it a little longer. The counting goes like this, starting at the beginning of measure nine. One and two and three and four and, okay? One and two and three and four and, and we reach up there and grab it with our pinky. Also keep in mind, that I use an upstroke on the second fret after that seventh fret. You can see that there on your tab. Cool. Let's try uh, from the kickoff um, uh, through measure 10. Um, that's a pretty good first line of the song. Here we go. You ready to play along with me very slowly? You have your tab out reading that. Here we go. One, two, three, Four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Good job. So there measure 10 is when we'll get ready to wrap back around to measure 11, which starts off the second half of that uh, A part. And then we're just going to get a little bit more bluesy with it. And get into some more cool licks. Um, let's look there starting at measure 11.